Welcome to Colombia! Today we will show you the Airspace Museum very close to Bogota. Welcome wonderful people all over the world. I welcome you to today's episode. We're actually very close to Bogota, about one hour drive and we're at the Aerospace Museum. And here with me, I present you, we have Teniente Cristiano Rodriguez. It's a first lieutenant for our US American audience. And he will explain us exactly what we can expect to see here. Thank you very much for that introduction, Frank. My name is, as you said, Cristian Rodriguez. And I'm going to be explaining to you the, what makes the museum special. As you said, it's an hour away from Bogota. And here you can find the history of all around uh, the Colombian aviation, military aviation specifically. First, I would like to tell you of the position that we are right now. We are right beside the Jaime Duque Park, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, theme park here in Colombia. And that gives us a uh, splendid opportunity to uh, get many visitors every year. So uh, you can actually get just into the Jaime Duque Park, you just park your car in there parking lots and just walk the path that we'll make to get into the uh, Colombian Aerospatial Museum. So now in the post-corona crisis, we have measures we have to comply with all over Colombia and also here. And Christian will tell us exactly what's going to be here. All right, so in the middle of this global pandemic, we are taking several steps to guarantee your safety as our visitors. First of all, as you can see, we've got a little carpet behind me. That little carpet is going to be filled when you visit, specifically during the weekends, with a special agent that will clean off your soles, the soles of your shoes, so that you can actually get into the museum without posing any threat to the personnel that is actually going to uh, give you the service, or well, to give you the tours or the opportunity to get to know the aircraft that are here in the museum. That's not all. As a measure of control and prevention, we have a, a special unit that will take out your temperature uh, from a distance, and we can actually know if someone is presenting symptoms related to COVID-19. So now that we've come very close to the museum, what you actually have to go through is through these tourniquets. These tourniquets, actually, you just have to present your ID card and immediately will let you through. But first, you have to go through the registration booth. As you can see on the floor, we actually have uh, the limitations marking where you can stand in relation to other people or to other groups. We have two different sections of the museum. One is the interior section on which you can get to know a little bit more about the history of flight in general and specifically in Colombia. In the second floor, we've got a temporary exposition talking about the centenary or the hundred years that the Colombian Air Force had the last year in 2019. And once you get out of the um, uh, interior zones, you can actually get to know all the different aircraft that we've got on the aeronautical park. So. As I will say now, and I'll repeat once again in the future, uh, the order on which you decide to go through the museum is up to you. You can decide if you want to go first and get to know the aircraft and then get into the interior exposition hall. And there I have a question. Are you also have guided tours? Well, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we have suspended them until further notice, until the situation has calmed down in relation to infections. So we used to have uh, guided tours, but right now what we try to do is to explain as much information as possible through the information panels that you'll find around the museum. We'll let you know if in the future, maybe next year, once the situation has died down a bit, calm down, uh, we'll let you know once the guided tours will be resu resumed. You had guided tours in English or just in Spanish? Well, yes, actually I am the person responsible to attend to the guided tours in English. So 
if anybody from around the world wishes to come here and we have resumed the guided tours, I'll be the one you will be speaking to. And the explanation we will find all over the places, I see they're bilingual, so we have them exactly. in Spanish and English. The idea behind the museum is that this is a place open to the world, let's say. So what we want to do is to make people know whatever the language, uh, we're trying to learn French and other idioms, even sign language for deaf people. And what we want to do is to, for everybody to get to know what we have here in the museum. So now we're inside the exposition halls. What I want you to know is that what you find first here in this section is the beginnings of the Colombian military aviation and the beginning of the dream of flight. On this first floor, you can actually get to know a little bit about the foundational myths around flight, manned flight. Because from the very beginning, humans have always looked at birds and wondered what makes them fly. So that's the beginning of the path that will lead humanity to get to fly. And specifically here in Colombia, by the year 1921, we had our first military aircraft, which is the one that I, we have right here, right above us. That's a French-made aircraft. It's called the Caudron G3. And it was a veteran of the First World War. And here in Colombia, it was used as an observation aircraft as well as a training aircraft. On this aircraft was actually uh, made the first uh, Colombian manned flight just by Colombians, not by the personnel that came to train the military personnel back then. In the first section, if you accompany me, I will show you actually the heart of the aircraft. We have a surviving Leron engine, which is the one that powered this aircraft. So follow me, I'll show it. So what I have here to my left is the Leron engine. This is a French-made engine that made possible for the Caudron G3 and G4s to fly. It actually had a horsepower potency of around 80 horsepower, which compared to modern engines is about the same as a little motorcycle. But that was more than enough to propel the Caudron G3 to speeds of about 140 kilometers per hour and to have ranges of up to 200 kilometers. <music> So we've come across this little piece of a diorama. This diorama represents a turning point in the history of the Colombian Air Force. By 1930, there was a little bit of conflict of tension in the southern border of Colombia, which is the Colombian-Peruvian border. The little town of Leticia, which later became the capital of the Amazonas Department of Colombia, was taken by Peruvian civilians that took it as their own for their own country. So this conflict was relatively short, relatively low intensity because it was so far away from the industrial centers of Colombia and Peru, but it was essential because it showed to the Colombian government the necessity to have aircraft to connect the different parts of the country. So we have here a representation of the shooting down of a Peruvian fighter aircraft over the Algodon River. So all of these objects tells us a little bit about the story. The, first of all, we have here um, newspapers cut out of the events that happened that day and how the Colombian aircraft made the, Colombi uh, the Peruvian aircraft run away. And also a um, telegram from one of the commanders of the zone that happened, this action happened in, uh, telling about the success of the action. <music> So, we have come to the centenary exposition hall of the Colombian Air Force here in the Colombian Air Special Museum. Here on these cubicles, you can actually find the elements that have been made in commemoration of the 100 years of history of the Colombian Air Force. Right on top, we can find little paper aircraft. These were made by children that came here on a visit to the Colombian Air Special Museum and they actually wrote their dreams on those pieces of paper, folded them into planes, and we, as a little homage, 
have decided to stick them into the uh, ceiling so that it will remain here for your visit. All right, so what we have come across is the flags of the different air bases that are scattered around the country. So we've got bases in the TZ Amazonas, in the bottom south of the country, up to San Andres and Providencia Islands. And all of these flags represent the region on which the base is actually located. So if we take a look at, for example, the uh, flag from the, in Spanish we call Grupo Aéreo del Oriente, Kaori, which is located in the Llanos region, deep within the Llanos region. It has uh, Guacamaya. And uh, for example, if we go about take, talking about the flag of many other, for example, uh, Comando Aéreo Combate Número 7, uh, that's a jaguar because it's located in the middle of the Amazon jungle in Tres Esquinas Caquetá. So all of these flags represent a base and represent the space on which they themselves are located. now in the outdoor part and I have actually two questions. How many airplanes and helicopters we can find here? And also I read that it's one of the biggest collections. So first question, uh, we've got 28 different aircraft counting between helicopters and a fixed wing aircraft. And this is one of the biggest outdoor collections in Latin America, if not the biggest. Why is it it's not the biggest? Because in Brazil there is actually a museum that has both aircraft, but they have medium to small sized aircraft. I did not have as many. So as you could see from the beginning, we have the very biggest, which is the Boeing 707 Seuss. That's our designation here in Colombia. And we also have the C-54 Skymaster and the C-130 Hercules. So all of these are very big aircraft that you cannot easily find in other museums or special museums here in Latin America. So this, I can say with certainty, it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest. And for our audience, before I forget, don't forget to push the like button because that's very good for our algorithm that our video gets spread all over the world. And if you have any questions, write them down in the comment section. You will find more information in the description section and let's go on with the tour. All right, so what I want to, jo to show you is this little aircraft that I have behind me. This is the B-26 Invader, American made from the Second World War. This is a ground attack aircraft, which was widely used here in Colombia between the decade of the 50s, as we had here a little bit of a hustle between uh, the conservatives and the liberals, which ended up in a long-winded conflict, which then gave rise to the ex-FARC, the ex-guerrillas that we had here in Colombia. So this little aircraft was nicknamed the Witch, or La Bruja in Espanol. So actually this got this nickname due to its colors. This is the actual colors they used on operations because this aircraft was mainly used in the first stages of nocturnal attack operations by the Colombian Air Force in the 50s. So this aircraft, apart from its noise, which was very much uh, recognizable by the end of the conflict by the combatants. So for the for go government forces was a really good thing to hear, but not so much for the enemy. So they nicknamed him the Bruja because you couldn't see it, but when you less expected, you had a bomb raining down on you or rockets or even machine gun fire. So this aircraft was nicknamed the Witch and that's why I think you should get to know it. And this is just one of the 28 different aircraft we have here in the museum. So 
and now we're standing in front of the U52 and I have to say something about that because in Switzerland we have some of them still operational not from the military but on a civil basis and I was lucky guy and we went to the Swiss Alps cruising around so I share very good memories with this type of uh, airplane but there's a different story here in Colombia I guess about that one. Yes exactly the UF-52 came to our country by 1932. Remember the conflict we talked about previously the Colombian Peruvian Amazonian conflict? That conflict made the Colombian government purchase three of these aircraft in the beginning there were just three of them that were purchased by the Colombian government to the German government in 1932. So as soon as they got here into the country, this was the main transport platform to get supplies from the center of Colombia all the way down to the Amazonian rainforest. So this aircraft is specifically important. This one is the first presidential aircraft that we had here in Colombia. This was flown, well, the then president uh, Enrique Olaya Herrera flew in this aircraft to different parts of the country. So this was the beginning of the tradition of the Colombian Air Force being the force dedicated to the transport, safe transport of the Colombian president around Colombia or even the world. So this is the precursor to the modern day presidential aircraft. All right, so the third and final aircraft I'm going to show you that we have here in the Aerospatial Museum in its aeronautical park is the H500. This H500 was from the first series. If you can actually see, it's very different from the another H500 that we have here, which is right beside it. So I want to tell you something. The Colombian Air Force is not only capable of training and fighting force sovereignty over the skies of Colombia, but it's also in charge of attending to humanitarian situations. Lately, because of uh, torrential rains in some sections of the country, uh, the Colombian Air Force has been on the forefront attending to those emergencies. So they come in and evacuate the people that have been stranded due to sudden floodings or even to wildfires that have happened. So in the attention to the wildfires, uh, Black Hawks from the Colombian Air Force are actually equipped with Bambi buckets, which can drain huge amounts of water on top of uh, fires or wildfires. But specifically this one, this uh, H-500 was used during the 1989 emergency in Armero. If you may know or may not know, there was a big avalanche caused by glacial meltdown and it tore through, destroyed, completely destroyed the little town of Armero in Tolima. So many, many people were killed, but also many, many people were stranded on the flood flows that happened. So one of these aircraft, or well, actually the whole squadron of this aircraft, which was affectionately known as Scorpion, or Scorpion, uh, actually tried to evacuate as many people as possible from the, evacuate, from the emergency zone. So that's another one of the tasks that has been entrusted to the Colombian Air Force and to this day has been continued to be uh, achieved or completed. So that's it for today. We just made the shortcut tour here in the Aerospace Museum close to Bogota. Thank you very much, Teniente Cristian, for leading us around. So for everybody who's interested coming here, it's actually very easy. If you book a trip with me, it's even easier. I send you all the best wishes to wherever you are in the world and I hope to see you soon here back on my channel or even better here in Colombia. See you soon. Yours Colombia Frank. Bye bye.